Next to face the dealmakers is Foxton-based developer Edgar Caballero. Edgar, hi. Thanks hi. for coming along today on The Deal. Now, you've flown in from Palmerston North today. Tell me, how is the Manawatu Wanganui property market going right now? Well, the Manawatu um, Wanganui market is actually bonkers. It's, it's booming really, really good. The sales on the, around the region are growing strong by the day which is ideal for any developments going around the regions. Fantastic. And you're going in today to talk specifically about a project that you're building in Foxton. Tell me how you're feeling about this pitch today. Yeah, well, I'm really excited, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that um, we will get three GCs from the judges, and um, hopefully we will be able to um, make some good offerings and sell some houses for you, uh, with you guys. Amazing. And finally, just before we let you go upstairs, have you been preparing for this pitch today? Yes, um, I have been preparing quite, quite a lot um, for the last um, few weeks and stuff, just to try to get everything nailed down to a T, um, obviously to impress the deal makers and everyone else as well. Well, Edgar, we wish you the best of luck with your pitch today and we look forward to seeing you after your pitch to the deal makers. No worries. Good luck. Sir. Thank you. The Manawatu Wanganui market may be booming, but will the deal makers go bonkers for Edgar's development or will it be a Foxton fizz? Good afternoon, deal makers. My name is Edgar um, Cavallero. Um, I'm a developer from Design Developments um, on the Ahoro Fenua. Um, I'm here today just to show you guys uh, a small developments we are doing at the moment down there. Um, basically, hopefully you like it. So this um, development is in Foxton Horofenua. So the development is literally of um, 10 houses, yeah? And with this development, we will be ideally selling it to you guys. This is a three bedroom, two bathroom, one garage um, house, 130 square meters. Um, the land size is 360 to, 400, to 510 squares. Uh, we will be looking at selling these um, houses for $630,000. Uh, the rental uh, ratio that we have is between 530 to 470. Now we're open for any questions. A short pitch for the first standalone houses we've seen on the deal. But can investors get big gains from this small town? First to investigate, the Prince of Property, Andrew Nicholl. Hi again, I'm Andrew. I just want to clarify, so these are purchase price of $630,000 and the rents were 470 to 530. Did I get that right? Yes. Thank you. Edgar. Slade, thanks very much for your presentation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a personal problem or a problem with this. Um, I'm not too sure where Foxton is. <laughs> where, where is Foxton? So basically Foxton is a community that is between Leveng and Palmerston North. Right. So Leveng is 20 k's from, from Foxton and Palmerston North is 30 k's from Foxton. Right. And how many people? What's so the population? this is a tricky one. So basically Foxton town has 3000 people on it, but it also has a town called Foxton Beach um, close to it that has uh, extra 2000 people on it. So Levine itself has over 20,000 um, people living in there. But Foxton has 3000. Foxton has 3000. That's what I need to know. So Edgar, who owns the land at the moment? Uh, uh, company does. The company, the company does, cool. And how long has the company been going for? So 
basically, my company has been going for over 10, um, over 10 years in business. Yeah, and we got a managing company that we have created. It's called Design Developments that will be looking and managing all the dealing with the council and with um, all the investors. And so the land's owned by your head company. You've got a separate company to do the development? Just to do the, um, the whole organization and project managing of right. the development. And are you employing builders or are you... Um, my company, CNL Builders, have sufficient builders to build. So you've got a building company, a construction company at the moment? A construction company. And how long has that been going for? So I have been a builder for over 10 years in proper business for four and a bit years. Yes. Yeah. And you're a builder yourself? Yeah. Cool. Master build? Um, no, um, certified builders. Certified. And do you think that's um, a disadvantage? No, no, not really. It's the same scheme, same warranties and everything else. Just master builder advertise a little bit more often, okay. I would think. Hi, Edgar. I'm Linda. Thank you very much for coming along today. Can you let me know when the completion date is for these properties? So everything, as you could see it on this photo here, with all the roading, all the building, everything going through, um, we will be looking at getting it all compact and finished in about 16 months. And how many houses are being built at the same time? So we will be looking at building about four or five at the same time. Edgar, how far are you into the process? Do you have plans in at the council or? Yes, yeah, so we got the whole project into council. Um, we're just sorting out a few minor RFIs and yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned you have 10 years building experience. Mm -hmm. How much experience do you have in doing a development of this magnitude? So my partner and I, we have been doing a small developments for about two years. Yeah. How how small? The last one we done was five, um, subdivision of five. And do you sell all those? Uh, we sold three as land, and then we're building, we built one as a house and land package and kept it for rental property. So this is quite a big, uh, a big step up in terms of project for cash flow. How are you funding this? Uh, because we own the land for quite some time. Yes. By the time it gets um, subdivided and all the stuff going through cancel, yes. um, we'll have a good um, cash flow with the titles and everything else. And because we will be selling it as a 20% deposit through a lawyer's um, trust account. So people have to pay a 20% deposit? Yes, 20% deposit through a lawyer's trust account. Right. Um, so they're safe. That's, That's quite a high deposit. You won't have access to that money though. So how does that improve your cash flow? So basically we have got to, um, got into some um, banks and things like that. Uh, the lending institution have said to us that we will sell half and we will get the funding for. So you have to sell 50%. You have to sell five of the pro uh, projects completed and then you'll get funding for the whole lot. Okay. What other developments are going on in the area that you might be competing against? Uh, so on this one, there is only an, a small one, probably three, four blocks down, that has about 12 houses on it, and that's completely sold. It was sold within probably a month or two months. Who's the builder for that or the developer uh, for that? That's a very good question. I want to get back to you on that one, Andrew. Okay. Do you know who the purchasers were of that? Development? Were they investors? Were they owner occupiers? Um, I believe they were all owner occupiers. Okay. Yes. Uh, how many people rent in Foxton? Um, that's a very good question, Andrew. We'll have to get back to you, but I would say it's probably about 17%. 17%? But yeah. that's just a guess. That's just a guess. Yes. Right. Okay. It's a good guess. So, Edgar, who do you say would be your target tenants for these properties? Who would want to live in one of these properties? So, we will, um, on this um, development itself, we will be aiming to sell half to owner occupiers and then the other, um, a little bit slightly under half 
for developers, um, just people to renting. So half are going to go to owner occupiers, half to investors. A little bit over half is going to go over into owner occupiers. Yes. Right. So six out of ten. A little yeah. bit over half. <laughs> yeah. So you basically got about four of them, if you sort of wish to invest on it. It's quite a small house for a three bedroom. Is it a double garage or a single? No, it's a single garage. Yeah, single garage. You will not be able to fit a double garage in there. And I just need to check this, uh, the section size to make sure I heard this right. 360 meters to 520 square meters, is that right? Yes. So quite a big variance. Are yeah. they all gonna be the same price, 630? Uh, there is a few that got, I'm only showing you guys this uh, model here. Right. There's another one that will be done out of fully Sira, and that will be another price, but it won't be much of a change. But um, that one will be aimed to owner occupiers. Igor, you mentioned the other development that has happened in Foxton. Mm -hmm. Do you know the sale prices so for those properties? Those ones, I believe they were selling for 660. Right. And um, the two bedrooms were selling for 620. And how does your quality compare to that development? Um, so the other development has the garage detached to the building. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. This one, we will have the garage laundry inside the building. Um, we will have two bathrooms on the, on the house as well, which is a huge advantage for any of the purchasers or the, or the renters. Right, so you, you would say you have a better product than the, what's yes. previously come? Yes, we have a better product. Of course. <laughs> no developer here that said the, other, <laughs> the opposite. Iker, I'm interested in the industry in the area. Mm -hmm. What type of industries are in the area and who are the people that are actually working within these industries? The biggest industry on the area is um, infrastructure, which is roading, um, services, power lines, um, also dairy farming and um, cattle farming for beef, yeah. Um, there is um, a lot of construction going around the area, which is a huge growth for the GDP. A lot of temporary things though. Sorry? Sounds like a lot of temporary things, so infrastructure, uh, farming obviously a bit more permanent, but uh, you know, construction. What happens when those people move out, they're finished with their um, projects and, and does that mean these properties are gonna sit empty? Uh, not necessarily, because um, basically the whole construction, the infrastructure start, um, side of things, they are building an uh, expressway from Otoki to Foxton. That will take about six years, I believe, to just get that progress, project finished. Investors normally invest for 15 years. Yes, like. I understand that. But also because Foxton is going to be the first, the first town from Wellington that people will go into. That will mean that um, the town will start growing a little bit more because everyone needs to go into restaurants, amenities, and things like that. So Foxton's a poor man's Wellington? Basically. <laughs> um, Edgar, tell us about your business partner. Yeah, so my business partner is uh, one of the managers, directors of design developments. Yes. Yeah, um, he does 60% of dealing with cancel, dealing with... Um, trying to find some land for us to purchase, um, things like that. Yeah, and um, myself, I just organize with the builders, and plumbers, electricians, and things like that to make sure everyone is going to be on time. So you project manager, are you on the tools as well? Uh, yes, I'm on the tools when, um, when I have to be. Right. Edgar, I'm still trying to wrap my head around Foxton. Um, why did you buy there? Why did you buy land? Why are you doing a development in a town with 3,000 people? Um, so basically in Foxton, if you look at the bigger picture, mm -hmm. the whole town is still a little bit undervalued mm -hmm. at the moment. Based on what? Based on the comparable sales of Parmesan North Levine and around the regions. Right. But median, median sale price for Foxton is 466 and you're selling at 630. Yeah, but yeah, I feel like you could be quite at the top of the market um, 
where is the rest of the growth for so investors? Basically, the median price for Foxtone at that price is for second-hand houses. Sure. That most of them haven't got, um, they, they, they haven't got an uplift yet. Yeah, and they're just selling as they are. This is a new build. That's just going to be, everything is new. You just move in tomorrow and you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, and most of the other houses that are around the region that are selling for that price. Do you think your demographic though that you're, you know, you're renting to, the people that are working on construction, the people uh, that are working on the infrastructure, that they're, they're necessarily going to pay a premium for brand new? Or uh, particularly if this is a, a, a temporary um, boost in population, do you think that maybe they'll just happily spend a little bit less and have second hand? Yes, that's a really good question, Andrew. But the thing is that the banks are very difficult to find, um, to, for, to give mortgages to first home buyers at the moment. Yeah, and especially if they haven't um, saved enough for um, the, um, the deposit, which means that um, renting it could be a for, more affordable sometimes for them to save the rest of the deposit to purchase a new home. Not sure if that answered my question, but um, stepping forward, what's included in your package? Is landscaping included, uh, heat pumps? Yeah, so that includes everything, basically. As you see it, probably not these pretty plants here, but um, driveways, um, grass, heat pump, up to healthy standards. Healthy home standards? Yeah, up to he healthy home standards, yeah. Basically, the whole lot of uh, fences. Edgar, can you guarantee that your properties will be up to healthy home standards for your purchases? Yes, we will be guaranteeing that um, all these houses will be up to healthy home standards for our purchases. And will the houses come with drapes? That's a really good question. I'm not 100% sure on the details for the windows, um, for the blinds or the curtains, but I would say it comes with a um, curtains and everything. Privacy so. is very important for tenants, so it's probably something worth considering. The Queen of Means not holding back as she looks out for her tenants. Let's find out if Edgar will leave with a deal. Edgar, I like the product. It looks nice, um, but there's a few fundamental things for me that uh, have a few alarm bells. There are a few questions which didn't fill me with confidence. The answers didn't quite fill me with confidence, but the biggest glaring one is the location for me. As an investor, number one is location. And yes, this could be the town of the future, but at the moment with just over 3,000 people, the growth is too far away. And I feel these homes could potentially be priced at the top of the market. So even if investors were to get into it, the growth for me, I don't think is there. So for me today, Edgar, it's a no deal. Okay, all right. Thank you. Edgar, thank you for your presentation today. As a property manager, I'm very aware of the fact that good quality houses in, in small New Zealand towns is very much in demand. And for that reason today, I'd like to make a deal. Thank you. I like the design of the property. I like the price point generally, uh, but I just don't buy into the fox and fizz. Um, a population of 3,000 people can be so affected by industry change. Uh, you guys had the Faltex uh, factory, which I know closed down back in the GFC. And there was huge unemployment after that. And it tends to be, you know, those type of workers that might be renting this kind of property. If that closed today, it'd be 7% of the workforce of Foxton. So something like that is too much risk, no deal for me. All right, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, guys. Well done, Edgar. Tell me, how did you feel that went today? Uh, that didn't, work, uh, didn't go the way I would expect it, but the development is still a great development. I'm pretty sure we won't have any trouble um, getting um, buyers for it. And specifically, Linda was really supportive mm. of this development, noting that there's a shortage of good quality rentals in smaller New Zealand towns. Tell me, what would an extra five or six rentals mean for the town of Foxton? 
Yeah, well, there is a huge stress uh, for rental properties around the region at the moment. Um, a lot of people are finding it really, really difficult to find houses. And five or six extra bedrooms or extra houses, it will be actually a huge help for this small town. Fantastic. Well, Edgar, thank you so much for coming in today on the deal and for coming down from Palmerston North. We really appreciate it. We look forward to seeing this development and these properties getting built and getting them tenanted because we know that will have a big impact for that small population in Foxton. All the best and no thank worries. you for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Ed.